Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher Oni de Guzman and our topic for today is Problem Solving Involving Proportions for Grade 9, Quarter 3. So let us recall first the meaning of ratio. So ratio is used to compare two or more quantities and quantities involved in ratio are of the same kind so that ratio does not make use of units. However, when quantities are of different kinds, the comparison of quantities that consider the units is called rate. Also, we will discuss the fundamental theorem of proportionality states that if a line paral parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. Let's consider this problem number one. The ratio of the length to the width of a garden is 5 over 2 or 5 is the 2. Find the length of the garden if the width is 40 meters. First, we will let x as the greatest common factor. Then, we have 5x is the length while 2x is equal to your width. Okay, so next one we have 5 over 2. So this is actually the ratio. That is equal to, okay, 5 represent the length, the number of units per length. So we have 5x all over 2 for the width. So this is equal to 40. So using the cross products, 5 times 40, this is the same as 2 times 5x. So I have here 5 times 40 equals 200, which is equal to 10x. And divide both sides of the equation by 10, so I have the value of x, which is equal to 20. But I want to find out, okay, the length, so that is 5 times x, which is equal to 5 times 20. So that is equal to 5 times 20 is equal to 100. So therefore, the length is equal to 100 meters. So let's move on to problem number 2. So the two complementary angles are in the ratio of 4 to 5. Find the measure of each angle. Let's recall if we say complementary angles are two angles such that the sum is equal to 90 degrees. So therefore, we can let x as the measure of one angle. Then 90 minus x is equal to the measure of its complement. So recall that, okay, I can use the ratio and proportion. So that is x over 90 minus x. So this is the ratio of measure of one angle to its complement is equal to 4 over 5. Using the cross products, I have here 5 times x is equal to 4 times 90 minus x. Again, using the distributive property, I have 5x is equal to 4 times 90 is equal to 360 minus 4 times x okay put together the variables so add both sides of the equation by 4x so i have here 5x plus 4x is equal to 360 then i have here 5x plus 4x is equal to 9x is equal to 360 then divide both sides of the equation by 9 so i have here x is equal to 40. So, based on my representation, this is the measure of one angle. On the other hand, I have 90, 90 minus x. So, that is the value of x is equal to 40. So, 90 minus 40 equals 50. So, this is actually the measure of its complement. So, therefore, the measure of the two angles are 40 and 50 degrees. Let's move on to problem number three. Find the geometric mean between 5 and 20. Let's recall if we say the geometric mean between two numbers a and b is the positive square root of their product. That is a over x is equal to, okay, x over b, then x is equal to a over b. So let's have here a over x is equal to x over b. So, such that a is equal to 5, b is equal to 20. Substitute that. So, we have 5 over x is equal to x over 20. Using the cross products, I have here 5 times 20 is equal to x times x. 
But 5 times 20 will give us x squared is equal to 100. And extract the root of both sides of the equation. So I have here x is equal to square root of 100 or x is equal to 10. So therefore, the geometric mean is equal to 10. So let's move on to the next problem. What is the ratio of x to y if? 2x squared plus xy minus 6y squared is equal to 0. So notice that we have here a quadratic trinomial. So let's recall how to factor the quadratic trinomial. So I look for the factors of 2x such that I have 2x times x. While the factors of 6 are actually 3 and 2. Since, okay, the middle term is positive, take note that if I multiply 2 times 2 is equal to 4 while 3 times 1 is equal to 3. Subtract, so that will resolve to x1. So therefore, here are the factors of this quadratic trinomial. So 2x minus 3y times x plus 2y equals 0. So using the zero property, of, okay, I have 2x minus 3y equals 0. So isolate now, okay, 3y. So I have here 2x is equal to 3y. If I add both sides of the equation by 3y. Then divide both sides of the equation by 2y. So I can, I can factor this one out to, okay, and y. So I have here x over y is equal to 3 over 2. So this is the ratio of x is to y, which is equal to 3 over 2. On the other hand, I have x plus 2y is equal to 0. So isolate the variable x. So subtract both sides of the equation by okay, 2y. So I have x is equal to negative 2y. Then divide both sides of the equation by y. So I have uh, okay, x over y is equal to negative 2 over y. So notice that I'm working with the ratio. So that's why I put negative a uh, negative 2 as a denominator 1. So therefore, the ratio of x to y is 3 is to 2 here or negative 2 is to 1. For our next problem, we will use the illustration on the right side. So we have triangle ABC. So we want to find out the length of AB. So take note that this line segment BC is parallel to this line segment. So, we will use the fundamental theorem of proportionality. It states that if a line parallel to one side of a triangle intersects the other two sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. So, I can hear here, so 24 all over x plus 8, which is the same as 18 all over x. So, I can use now the cross products, 24 times x is the same as 18 times x plus 8. Using the distributive property, I have 24x is equal to 18 times x plus 18 times 8 is equal to 144. Okay, then subtract both sides of the equation by 18x. I have 24x minus 18x is equal to 144. So I have here 6x is equal to 144. Divide both sides of the equation by 6. So I come up with x is equal to 24. But I want to find out the line segment AB. So take note that with okay, segment addition postulate, I can have 24 plus x plus 8. But take note that x is equal to 24. Substitute. So I have here 24 plus 24 plus 8. So this is equal to 56. So therefore, we can say that the length of AB is equal to 56 units. Let's move on to problem number 6. There are 600 students in grade 9. If the ratio of male students to female students is 5 is to 7, how many male students are there in grade 9? So we will represent x as the greatest common factor between 5 and 7. So we have 5 parts and 7 parts. So it means that I have 5 times x is equal to the number of female students in grade 9. On the other hand, 7 times x is equal to the number of male students in grade 9. 
So take note, if I'll combine the 5x and 7x, the total is equal to 600. So start with my equation, 5x plus 7x is equal to 600. Okay, so combine together 5x and 7x, it will result to 12x. Then divide both sides of the equation by 12, so x is equal to 50. But I want to find out the number of male students. So I have 7 times x is equal to 7 times 50 equals 350. So this represents the number of male students. So therefore, there are 350 male students in grade 9. So let's move on to problem number 7. Solve for the value of x in the proportion x plus 7 all over 7 is equal to 18 over 6. Again, so if we will recall, we can use the cross products. So it means x plus 7 all over 7 is equal to 18 over 6. So using the cross products I have here, x plus 7 times 6 is the same as 7 times 18. So it means that 6 times x plus 7 equals 18 times 7. So using the distributive property, 6 times x is equal to 6x, while 6 times 7 equals 42. And 18 times 7 equals 126. Subtract both sides of the equation by 42. So I have here 6x is equal to 84. Then divide both sides of the equation by 6. So x is equal to 14. So therefore, the value of x is equal to 14. So that ends our topic on problem solving involving proportions. Again, this is Teacher Oni de Guzman. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.